Daniel here with another Casual Dude Review, and today we're going to be talking about Loom. And so I broke out the collection today, and what we're going to do is put this under the UV light and show you guys what kind of Loom each watch has. So we'll do these uh, three by three. Um, as you can see, that I have these cases here that hold three watches, so we'll just hold up the case and run the UV light over it. It's a little bit of a cloudy day here in Los Angeles today, so I'm hoping this works. I'm hoping we get good quality video with it being just dark enough for us to show off the loom. And so just to start testing it out, let's go ahead and check out the Speedmasters. And so what we have here is the new First Omega in space. We have the Silver Snoopy. And then of course we have the white dial right here. And let's just make sure we're getting quality video here. It looks a little bit grainy because we are in a dark environment, but let's go ahead and take a look here. So we're gonna pass the light through here. And so this is the first Omega in space. And you can see there we've got our green loom on the indices. And then we have our hour and minute hand that also illuminate there. And the loom is, is kind of part of the package here. This is a vintage inspired watch and the loom is there to mimic it. Let's go ahead and do the silver Snoopy. And so as you can see, not too much loom here. We do have a little bit of loom on the chrono hands, and then we have the minute and hour hands, as well as a small dot above the indices. And we can expect something similar here from the white dial Speedmaster as well. So pretty standard. Now let's uh, stick with Omega here, and we are going to look at the James Bond editions as well as the Heritage 300 Seamaster. Let's start with the Heritage. Now that pops, look at that. So we can just uh, get under there. So not only do we have it on the bezel, but we also have a great loom over here on the hour and the minute hand, and then all of the indices, that whole sub panel that kind of gives it that, you know, aged patina look, all just pops. And so similar to other Seamasters, we have the green loom at the 12 o'clock marker on the bezel and on the minute hand, and everything else has got this kind of like nice blue loom. Now moving on to the 60th anniversary bond, similar here, um, the bond watches are absolute loom monsters. And so that whole bezel there is uh, showing up in the dark as well as all of the dots for the hour markers and then for the hour and minute hand. And if you could see there, we'll pass through it again really quick, the minute and 60 marker on the bezel are both green where all of the other ones are blue. And then we're going to see a similar thing here with the No Time to Die Omega Speedmaster. Again, another loom monster. This whole thing in the dark, I mean, I don't even know how to explain it. I mean, look at that. I mean, this watch just explodes at night. This is by far, like I said, loom monster all the way. Um, by far one of the most illuminated watches that I have in the collection. And when you walk into the house after a sunny day, this whole thing just lights up. So probably one of my favorite um, pieces as far as loom goes. I know some people like it more subtle, um, but yeah, I mean, considering that it is more of a outdoorsy, explorer-y, you know, diver watch, I love the fact that it, it just illuminates like that. And so not much to show here with the Cartier Santos. And by not much, I mean absolutely nothing. If you see there. This is not a watch that you want to wear in a dark environment. There is absolutely nothing to show. But when it comes to the Air King, the Rolex Air King, and the Explorer, we see similar things here. So it's a pretty good shot here. Let me see if I get the light without the reflection. And you'll see the three, six, and nine markers all light up, as well as all the indices, and then your second hour and minute marker our hands are all lighting up as well and then we get a similar treatment here for the air king 
Now the Air King um, obviously doesn't have any indices there, so we do have the double digit numbers. Those do not light up. And so you are actually getting more loom from the Explorer than you are the Air King. All right, next let's talk sub and GMT. And so here we go. Obviously the root beer and the Batman are gonna have a similar type of loom. You can see all the dots at the hours there are illuminating. Unlike the James Bond, No Time to Die, Seamaster, the numbers on the bezel do not light up. So all of the loom is contained within the watch here. And so all of the dark dots uh, representing the hours and you have some great loom on the hour and the minute hands there. It's a uh, kind of a thick line there on the minute hand and the hour hand, you have that, uh, you know, quote unquote Mercedes logo that reads well at night. So this watch is absolutely great at night. Um, not too much, not too little. It um, delivers on its promise as far as what you would expect from a well loomed watch. And then for the Submariner, we kind of have the same thing here. You do have the pip at the top that does, uh, you can see that glowing there. And it's got that great kind of blue hue to it. Um, it doesn't catch as well on video as it does in person, but it's a really nice, like, vibrant blue. And so, let me take the light away. I think you get a better idea of that. And so that would be the loom for these three watches. And then lastly, we're going to look at my gold pieces. And so we have our Daytona. Not too much to illuminate here, but there we go. Nice view of what you can see there. All of the indices as well as the hour and the minute hand. Not too thick, just uh, good enough to read at night. But, you know... It's, uh, it does the job. And then we're gonna go ahead and look here. There is nothing to illuminate. Oh, my bezel guard is still on it, so that's illuminating. But because we have the champagne dial with the Roman markers, there's nothing to illuminate. So this is a, a piece that I definitely won't be seeing too much of at night. Whereas if you did have the indices, it would look more like this and so you know, similar indices on the date just and on the day date. Whereas if you had the, uh, the, the stick indices, then you will get that loom. And so you can see that on the hour and the minute hands there. And so that's pretty decent loom. And then we are actually going to throw a wild card in there. So I do have a couple of the Omega moon swatches and here we go, it's upside down there. But so, let's take a look at what they have. So not bad for a cheap little plastic watch. You've got a similar loom to the actual Speedmaster where you got your, um, all of the indices. You have your hour, you have your minute hand, and then you have your stopwatch there, so. Pretty cool. But the reason I broke that out is because I do have one more moon swatch and I think it would make for some nice video here, but I did get this Snoopy with the moon phase. And so I really, I haven't checked it out and I'd really like to do that. But if you can see here, um, the moon phase is very difficult to see unless you've got a black light on it. In fact, when you buy this watch, they give you a little black light so you can admire it. But if you see here, I'll get some light there. We have the indices, we have the hour and the minute hand. And then I think there is, I thought there was something on the back there, but I guess not. Um, but it's gonna be really tough to capture on camera, but you do have some copy there that can only be seen under the black light. So if you look between the moon phase right here, there's a bit of a kind of an Easter egg thing here. And so this is the Snoopy version of the moon swatch. And so I figured I'd throw those in as a bonus while I'm breaking out the black light, but all cool pieces. Like I said, we're gonna keep this video short and yeah, which watch in particular did you like the loom of? I personally, you know, 
like I said, not too subtle, but the uh, the James Bond No Time to Die watches are just absolutely stunning at night. Like, you can probably actually go diving with these. I would have to say No Time to Die is my favorite. So do you have any interesting loom stories? Are there any watches here in particular that you like the loom of? If so, let us know in the comments. We'll keep it short and sweet today. Here's the original Speedmaster. I didn't have it in the video because it is a bit redundant to the white dial. But yeah, I hope this uh, provides some insight to you. I know this is probably not going to make or break a purchasing decision, but I thought it'd be cool to show it off. So everybody, thank you for watching. We do have some more watch videos coming up. If you do see any watches in the video here that you want me to compare, I have been taking kind of requests in the comments lately. So I'd love to hear what you have as far as ideas for content. And I'd be happy to share it with you if you're kind of like on the line between making a decision on a couple of watches. So um, obviously big Omega and Rolex fan, and I do have the Cartier as well, but love to help you make a purchasing decision. Love to put things side by side for you. Just let me know in the comments and we will go ahead and try to make a video for you. Thanks for watching.